Hello everyone. Apparently I'm live. Welcome back to Sukiyo's Art Channel. And today we're going to be doing a review on this live video. Okay. I never know with these things whether I'm live or not. It's really annoying. Leave a comment in the comment section to let me know if you can see what's happening here. Okay, so um, I can't take a long time today. Uh, usually these videos last a lot. Sorry, making noise with my little, let me just show you, this is a little elephant and I keep all of my brushes and pencils in it. I actually built this myself, I'm really proud. I know it's a small little thing, but still. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so usually my videos take about like two hours, but today I actually have to be quite quick because I was supposed to go over to my family's house and I'm already running late because I wanted to do this video and I was supposed to do it during the week and I didn't get a chance to because I've been working nonstop. Anyway, let's get on with the video. Let's not dilly dally. So today I'm going to be reviewing the Pelican Opaque Paint Box set. Um, oh yeah, just to let you know as well, guys, um, since my last video, I've gotten birds. So I've got two zebra finches. So if you hear a lot of chirping in the background or a lot of noise, that's because those are my birds. I can't shut them off. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so back to the paints. So um, my friend uh, went uh, to Portugal last year uh, on holiday in between the lockdowns when people are actually allowed to go. And he um, he asked me if I wanted anything. I said, well, you can bring me some art supplies if you want. And he got me these paints. Now, at first I thought they were watercolors, but because it says opaque, I'm not sure if it's gouache. It might be gouache because sometimes you do get wash in this kind of format uh, where you have it in the... in pens or, or cakes like these instead of like in tubes. <clears throat> yeah, um, so this is more like a children's set, I believe. Uh, you can tell because of the cartoony elephant. <laughs> but still, I, I was really happy when I received them. I think it looks really pretty. So yeah, let's get on with opening it and see what it's like inside. Um, sometimes when I get art supplies, I'm not patient and I just open them straight away, even before I do a video, because I just want to see what they like. But with this one, I was actually really patient. I'm proud of myself. And um, I didn't actually open it. So let me just show you really quickly. This is what the paints look like. So it's Pelican, it says opaque paint box. Uh, I think that's German. That's another thing as well, even though he got these in Portugal. And they're not a Portuguese brand, they are a German brand. It says 22 Farben, which I guess means colors, because it says colors right there underneath that word. If you can see that. Can you see that? Farben? Ah, I got it for a second. Oh, there we go. Okay. And then it says Pelican here again. As you can see, it also comes with a brush. These are cakes, they're called cakes. So when you get a watercolor set or a gouache set in this format, the pans are usually the ones that, you know those paints that come inside those little plastic containers, little ones, yeah? Like in the Cotman ones, and you can actually take out the paint from the plastic bit if, um, if it's not wet. With cakes, that doesn't happen. The cakes are actually stuck down. Um, also, I believe they're more chalky. Maybe that's why they're called cakes. Right, so at the back you just have some explanations. So it's written in Deutsch, I think, first. Then English, and it says quality paints for school and home. Vivid colors, good covering power, light fast. Interesting, okay. And it contains 22 colors, one brush. Um, it doesn't say if it's watercolor or gouache. It just says that they're paints. So I guess we'll find out. Uh, sometimes what happens is if they want to make a color opaque, they add... Um, actually, I don't, I don't know what I was going to say anymore. <laughs> uh, they may have added quite a bit of hue or pigment to it to make it opaque. And then the chalkiness might make it, if they add a lot of chalk, it might uh, mimic uh, the consistency of gouache, but it's not gouache. It's just really thick paint, I guess. So we'll find out when we experiment with them. My birds, my birds, my zebra finches have just laid three eggs. Today was the third time they laid an egg. I think that's why they're so quiet. Either it's because I'm talking or it's because one of them is in the nest, um, you know, just warming up the eggs. And the other one is like on the outside watching out for any predators. They're so cute. Anyway, um, right. So, yeah, still can't tell if they're watercolors or gouache. 
So that's the write-up. It's it's a very simple write-up, just in different languages, as you can see. It's the same thing over and over again. And then here it says Pelican again and opaque pink box in different languages. So that's pretty much it. Oh, and then it says Germany. So I was right, it's German. Okay, cool. And there's some writing on the side, but it's not really important. It's probably just the address of where they're based and a barcode. Um, so it says made in Germany in Hanover. So that's cool. Uh, and I think, yeah, okay, that's probably where the company is based. And then on the side here, it just says it, it's got small parts, which, you know, if a little kid puts it in his mouth or her mouth, they can choke on it or something. So it's just a warning. Um, yeah, just a warning. And then he says, you know, don't let uh, kids who are under three years of age play with it. Come on. Uh, there we go. <laughs> and then on top, yeah, it just says a Pelican opaque pink box again. So, okay, let's try and open this. I've tried opening this before, but it's really difficult because like these grooves from the box are like outside, coming outside of the cardboard. So I get the feeling that I'm gonna have to rip it in order to open it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it because I've tried opening it this way, but it doesn't come out because of the grooves, see? <clears throat> like they get stuck there. Ay, ay, ay. And then when I try like lifting this bit, this one gets stuck on these grooves. So what's the point? What's the point, guys? Do I have scissors at hand? don't think I do. Maybe I can try with this thing and just try going like this. Oh, here we go. Just do it like this. Okay. It's the quickest way I can think of opening these. Okay, cool. So I've got my iPad here because usually I would have used my TV, which is resting here, uh, to put the um, the image on there that I'm actually going to study. I'm going to do a study of. But uh, my keyboard, not my keyboard, my mouse, the mouse pad on my laptop decided to stop working, so I couldn't bring the image over. So I'm just going to be using my iPad today. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Let's open it. Oh, what's happening? Oh, wait, there's tape. I didn't see the tape. Let me just remove the tape. Oh, gosh. <laughs> ah, so frustrating. It's like so well stuck down. My hands are slippery as well because I put some cream on them. So that's probably why I can't remove the tape. Okay. Okay. So now there's some more tape on the other side. Oh, thank you for letting me know, David, from David's Art Channel. He says the video is working fine. It's live. So this is great. look like so oh do you know what guys I forgot to get water to dip my brush into how silly is that I'm gonna have to go down to the kitchen so just bear with me you're gonna have some you're gonna hear some sounds of me moving things about and opening the door ah oh, can't believe I forgot the water just bear with me guys I'm just gonna get some water
Okay, guys, I'm back. And just put the water down. Okay. And closing the door. So I live uh, with other people. I have some roommates. So I like closing my door just in case they make noise downstairs. I don't want you guys to be bothered by that. Okay, I dropped some water on my sketchbook. That's okay. Okay. I'll just use this one because it's a little bit cleaner, this page. <clears throat> I'll say, okay, so like with anything, I'm going to start out by doing a color chart. Just see what the colors look like because sometimes, especially with cheaper sets like this one, what tends to happen is um, the colors might not look like, well, they might not look the way they do on the actual cake or pan or even the way it looks in the tube, especially if there's a lot of pigment and the color is really saturated, really concentrated. Um, it might actually turn out to be lighter on paper than it does, you know, on the pan or the cake or in the tube. So let's just do a real quick color chart and see what they look like. The only thing about these is because they're children's paints, um, they don't have color names, which when you do a color chart can be difficult to identify. So I have to think of a system in which I'm going to do this. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll start here and go this way and then this way and then this way. Okay. If you guys could let me know if it looks really dark on the screen, because I feel like it's looking a little bit dark. If you can see everything perfectly, that's great. If you're having problems seeing it because it's a bit dark, uh, please let me know. I'm just moving my TV because I'm not using it anyway. So there you go. That has given me a bit more light. Okay. Trying to move it a little bit more. Okay. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Okay. Let's start with the color chart. Okay. So I'm going to try that brush first. Uh, it just says Pelican 24, 424, and then there's four dots there. I'll try and bring that up so you can see. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to try that. Uh, I was going to say toothbrush, you know. <laughs> I'm going to try that paintbrush first and see what happens. They actually look really nice, I have to say. They look really soft and smooth. They don't look very chalky. Um, they don't feel chalky at this point either. Okay. And uh, let me find my best way. When I put it down on the paper, it feels very smooth and very soft. And the colors are very pretty so far. I mean, I say colors. I mean color, the one color. This is a very nice carmine, I would say. Okay, that's nice. That that feels really nice. Doesn't feel chalky. You're gonna see me get rid of the color on this piece of paper here. On the the next piece of paper, this is how I get rid of my color. I don't like wiping it on a towel, so I just like doodle on the next piece of paper. <laughs> okay. I really like the way the color washes as well. It has a really nice quality to it. It creates really nice washes so far with that first color. Usually with cheaper sets, the consistency tends to be different from color to color. It tends to vary. Um, however, this is a German brand. And in my experience, German brands tend to be quite high quality, even the, the children's uh, Swiss and German brands, like if you use Caran d'Ache or Faber-Castell, even their student grade uh, products and children's products tend to be really good. Okay, so it's not as uh, saturated as I thought. It is because it's a cheap watercolor set. Um, you can see that it's a bit light on color. It's a little bit, I mean, I know it's watercolor and it's, it's going to produce a wash. But it's you can see the particles uh, separating a little bit from the water there. I don't know if you guys can see this on camera. But yeah, but still, they are nice colors. I 
I think maybe I'm adding too much water to it as well. The brush is fine. So far, it's really soft and really nice, easy to use. Um, I don't know if it would be good for details because it seems a bit too soft. And also hairs are beginning to fall apart on the, the cakes. Don't know if you can see that there. There's already a hair there. So that's not good. But as far as cheap uh, watercolor brushes go that come with sets like this one, this is not a bad brush. It's okay. For the actual drawing, I will switch over to one of the other brushes because I don't think I'd be able to do details with this brush. It's just now that I've used it a little bit, it is beginning to fall apart. <laughs> I don't want to take too long doing the watercolor chart, so I'm going to try and hurry through it. OK, I'm beginning to feel the chalk now. Um, this one is a little bit chalky. It's possible the other ones were too, and I just didn't notice. Didn't notice it right away. It's not a lot of chalk. It's a little bit of chalk. So they're not the chalkiest paints I've ever used. Also, I think because I was adding a little bit um, more water before, I'm trying to add less. When you add more water, maybe you don't notice it as much. Whereas you, when you add uh, less water, uh, it becomes a bit more obvious that there is chalk. So it's not too chalky, to be fair. But it, it, there is a little bit of chalk, which makes sense because they are children's paints. So. At least the colors are vibrant enough and they do produce nice washes. Uh, they do dry lighter than when you first deposit them on the page. I do apologize, I forgot to turn off the sound on my phone. So if it goes off, I apologize in advance. <laughs> I'm, I'll turn it off in a second. Mm, yeah, the green is not as uh, saturated as the other ones a little bit. Yeah. I might switch over to a different brush soon, actually. I might not wait for the whole um, color chart to be done. Okay, guys, just bear with me. I'm just going to switch off the sound on my phone. One second. If I can. Sorry about that. I'm trying to switch it off and it just keeps going back up. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So they're drying fine. Uh, there's nothing really to say about the way they're drying. As I said, the colors do look a little bit lighter 
uh, than when they first go on the page. Uh, but they, these are cheap watercolors. I I don't think my friend ever told me how much they cost because obviously it was a gift, so he wouldn't have wanted to do that. Okay. bit too close to that other one. They are pretty colors though, I'm not complaining. I think so far on a first impression, um, as far as the color chart goes, I think, you know, so far they feel like one of the better children's watercolors I've, I've tried. I've tried quite a few and the colors are vibrant enough, I think, for children. Some of them are better than others, I would say, but uh, as I said at the beginning of this video with cheap watercolor sets, the consistency can vary from color to color. You know, sometimes that even happens in more expensive sets, which is really frustrating. Like with my Prismacolor pencils, for example, which I adore, I love those pencils. Um, for the most part, the formula is consistent, but there's like one purple, I think, or one blue, or maybe two colors where it's just awful. You can't use them because the colors are so grainy and they don't feel nice when they go on the paper, which is such a weird thing to say because Prismacolor pencils are so soft and smooth and buttery. Like, ah, uh, I love those pencils so much. Um... But yeah, um, even like with Faber-Castell polychromos, which again are also pencils that I like a lot, um, you do get this weird discrepancy in, uh, in, in quality from pencil to pencil. Some of them are a bit smoother than others. Uh, some of them are a little bit scratchy occasionally, like the gold one, I think, the gold polychromos is a little bit scratchy. And there was a few others as well where I experienced that. So. It just goes to show how hard it is to get the formula right, even with really expensive um, products. I think the only one, no, I'm thinking about the luminance, the Karen Dash luminance, and even they um, get this problem because some of the pencils are actually a little bit scratchier than others, I've noticed. So, yeah. It's interesting, but it happens more often with uh, cheaper art supplies than it does with, ooh, I did too much water there, with expensive art supplies. That's a really nice turquoise there. I think that's it's gonna dry quite saturated, which is nice. Um, I find with cheaper color sets, um, paint sets, whatever they are, <clears throat> the blues and the browns tend to be the richer colors, um, like more fugitive colors like pinks and reds tend to be a little bit more chalky or a little bit more light in their saturation. Um, yeah, the browns and the blues, maybe the greens tend to be the best uh, colors in cheaper sets. And that may be because those colors are more natural, more readily found in nature. Okay, I think I'm gonna switch over the brush now because if you can see the bristles are starting to come apart. Ooh, don't know if you can see that. No. It's not gonna focus, okay. <laughs> I managed to do it earlier. Okay, never mind. But the point is the bristles are starting to come apart. So I think I'm gonna switch over to one of my other brushes. I have quite a few here. Uh, I'll use I'll use this one. The De La Rowney number two. S bright, simply, simply De La Rowney. This is, I think, their student brand or their children's brand. 
got a white here. I'm not sure if there's any point in swatching the white because I'm doing it on white paper, but I'm going to try anyway. Okay, I can sort of see it. It's not completely white. It's, is anything completely white? Can you actually make a completely white type of color? You wouldn't be able to see it at all, probably. <laughs> there is a black. Um, when Usually when we get blacks, even in expensive sets, they're not true blacks. Because the other day I was watching this video on YouTube and this girl, she found a true black paint. I don't know if it was oil or acrylic, but it was true black. And it was incredible. Like when she put it on the paper, it actually looked like you were looking into a black hole because it was so black. It, it looked literally looked like there was a hole on the page. So I think that's why companies don't produce true blacks because if they did, because black is not, is not a color, it's just the absence of color. Of course, if you have a pigment, that's black. That That's a color because it's a pigment that exists. That's a color. But I mean, in general, black is not a color. It's a neutral, but it's the absence of color. Um, so that's what happens when you use a true black. It just looks like there's nothing there because it's the absence of color. Oh, okay. That was my phone dropping. I apologize. Somebody is calling me and the phone was vibrating and it just fell off the desk. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so yeah, that's why companies that I believe don't produce like true blacks because it would look too weird for the human mind to comprehend. So what they do is they produce really, really dark grays that get as close to black as possible. So, you know, technically they are black. They're just not true black, if that makes sense. So the reason why I'm talking about the black is because I assume it's the same thing with the white. Um, they couldn't produce a true white. If they're making a color, that's white because white is just like light. So you wouldn't be able to see it at all. I'm sure to some of you, this sounds pretty obvious and you're going, duh. <laughs> but um, it's just part of my journey as an artist, you know, trying to learn about color and how things work. Okay. So that's why I can see this white on the page. You probably can't see it on camera, or maybe you can, because this really high definition is like this little square here. Um, but I can see it from, yeah, I can see it from all angles because it's not completely white. It's like there's a tinge of, there's a tinge of gray to that white. A slight tinge of gray, which is why it pops off the page if you're paying attention. So I just doodle with the extra paint that's left on the brush instead of just getting rid of it com completely. It's not a masterpiece, but I'm sure somebody would look at that and, and probably like maybe like thousands of years from now, somebody will find my sketchbook and they'll try like aliens maybe and they're trying to analyze it and find out what it means. Like, is there some secret code? Like what were people of the 21st century thinking? And they'll think it's, you know, some sort of weird Rorschach art test or what, however you call that test, whatever you call that test. Is it Rorschach? Is there an R in it? I don't know. I don't remember now. <laughs> Yeah, so again, you can see the particles separating from the water, which is really interesting. I've seen that in the Sakura Koi set, um, where the, art, the, the articles, you know, the, par the particles were separating from the water. I watched a video once where somebody explained why cheaper sets do this, but I don't remember now. So why bother mentioning it, right? <laughs> There's a reason for it. I just don't know what it is. Oh yeah, also um, this is, it doesn't feel like wash, definitely feels like watercolor. So I would say it's watercolor. It is opaque watercolor, I guess, which is, that's basically gouache is supposed to be opaque watercolor. Um, that's what we call gouache, opaque watercolor. And some of them are, they are definitely quite saturated and bright and vibrant and pretty. Um, but they don't feel quite like wash. They do feel like watercolor. 
Maybe it's because I've been adding too much water. Because when you dilute gouache, it does feel like watercolor. So um, I do, that is something I have to practice not doing. I always do add a little bit too much uh, water when I'm using the watercolor, which you don't want to do. I, I suppose actually it depends which effect you're going for. If you want a lot of washes, then yeah. Okay, let me try with only a little bit of water, see what happens. No, still, still looks like watercolor. Still feels like watercolor. So I would say it's definitely watercolor. If you add extra layers, then yes, it becomes more opaque. I have to add extra layers with some of these colors because as you saw, that purple was quite slight. Okay, there you go. Those are my birds chirping. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me. They're happy. Okay, yeah, so with some colors like that purple, which was very light, I had to add another layer just to get a feel for the color. I don't think I spent a lot of money on these watercolors. By the way, if you guys can't hear me over the birch chirping, please let me know, because I'm not sure at this point if you can hear them or not. So a comment from anybody would be really helpful. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know how much he spent on these watercolors, but I don't think it was too expensive. I do believe it was under 10 euros. Um, I think it was 7 euros something. I don't remember. He may not have told me. And I may be confusing that with something else. Yeah, but some of these colors are definitely more saturated right off the bat than others. Purples tend to be very fugitive, so... But this one is quite a bluish purple, and bluish purples tend to be a bit more light fast. Oh, great. Thank you, David, for letting me know. Okay, two more colors to go, and then I do my drawing. Okay, so these are 22 colors. It, there's a nice selection here. Oh, sorry, I mixed the gray with the brown there a little bit. That was an accident. Okay. Just giving the, this little heart flower, whatever it is, some gray skies. Okay, and then it's the black. Okay, that's not so bad. Definitely looks like a dark gray, not a black, but it is what it is. And when you layer it, it looks more black, so that's good. Okay, so just getting rid of the black. Okay, this is a much better brush. <laughs> okay. All right, so here are our colors. So we have two yellows, two oranges, uh, two reds, uh, a magenta of some sort or a pink of some sort. Uh, we have four blues. I would consider that a blue. There's a tinge of green to that, but I would say it leans more towards the blue than it does towards the green. Uh, so I'll say there's four blues. There's three greens. This is quite a bluish green. It's like much more turquoisey than actual green, but I'll say it leans more towards the green. So I'll say there's, oh no, there's there's four greens because this is like an olive green. This may be like a greenish brown, but I would classify that as brown. So I'll say there's two oranges, two yellows, two reds, a vermilion, and a, a carmine. Um magenta, four blues, um, four greens, and then a, a greenish brown here, um, another brown, so two browns, this kind of like Caucasian beige skin color, a gray and a black, and uh, yeah, and a white. 
Oh, and a purple. So, yeah, I would say four children. That's a nice balance. So I'll just try mixing um, this red with a with a blue and see if we can get a nice purple. That's a really nice red. <laughs> I really like that color. And now I'll try mixing. <laughs> my birds want to take over my video. Don't know if you can hear them chirping. I'm going to try mixing this blue. See what happens. Usually I would do more mixes than this, but I, I don't have time because I have to get started on the drawing. So, okay, that's a nice purple. I added a bit too much blue, so let me add a bit more red. That's too much, too blue. Okay. Maybe that's a bit too red. Ah, now it's becoming really chalky. <laughs> because I've mixed so much. This is something that happens often in cheap sets. Uh, the more colors you mix, the more muddy and chalky they become. Just goes to show that there's actually a substantial amount of chalk in there. Not as obvious in some of the sets. Granted, it's there. Okay. Okay, that's a more reddish purple now. Okay, so they mix quite well. Okay, that's good. So they mix quite well. Um, just obviously you have to be careful how many colors you mix because as I said, they can get muddy and chalky, but then there's such a big selection that you might find you don't have to mix that many colors. So that's the good thing about having a big selection of colors. It means you don't have to mix as much as you want. But I know that people like working from limited palettes. Um, so, um, yeah, this will not be the set for you if you like working from limited palettes. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear my words. Okay, so this is what I'm going to draw. I'm going to do a little study of this. Um, so this is, uh, I actually Googled um, Alien from The Simpsons because originally <laughs> I wanted to draw an alien from The Simpsons. But when I uh, Googled that, it came up with this toy of Maggie as an alien. And I thought that was so cute. So that's what I'm going to be drawing today. So I need to lean this against something actually because can see. I'm going to try and lean it against my elephant. There. Okay. I can see that better. So there's not going to be a masterpiece. It's just going to be a little study. Okay. So I'm just going to start with the basic shapes. As I said at the beginning of this video, this is not going to take as long as it usually does because um, I have a lot of things to do today. I just wanted to get a video in. So I've been meaning to do this this whole week. Then her body's like a triangle. So this is just a little study. I am working on my sketchbook. So sketchbooks are not meant to be perfect. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Ah, yes, that's your excuse for drawing crappily. <laughs> no, not really. So she kind of has this kind of like rounded square head with these stars coming out of the top. Ooh. Then one in the corner there and then one here. She has a little ear right here. I'll put it here as well. Then she has a little triangle there. Okay. A little one and a little one there. Oh, 
I try and go back. <laughs> Not even. Okay, and then she has these tentacles coming out here. And she has like a baby's bottle here. And another tentacle here. And then she has more coming up here behind the bottle. And then she has this little, she's holding this little teddy bear. Okay, so I'll work on that in a sec. Oh, and she has a little tentacle coming out here, just beneath the the bear's arm. And then there's a cube. I love drawing shapes like cubes because they're so easy. She says drawing a crappy cube. What the hell is going on with that cube? Jeez. Sorry, that, sorry about the, 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 sorry guys. Then another circle here and here. She's got this, um, the shaker that babies have. I forget what they're called now. Okay, let me try to do something with what I have. Um, I'm gonna use gonna use my Blackwing Palomino. I love these pencils. They're so awesome. And there's a rubber on top, and there's places where you can buy replacement rubbers. Went to a shop once in, I live in London. Um, <clears throat> it was in Central somewhere, I don't remember where now. The lady told me, oh, I think it was um, that bookshop in Waterloo Station. Uh, it's very famous, I forget what it's called now. She told me where I could buy the extra rubbers, and I've completely forgotten them. Okay, forgot to draw her face, but I'll draw, I'll draw the, the, by face, I mean, I forgot to draw the eyes and the nose and the dummy, but I'll draw the, these first, like, just getting the face right. This is a really quick sketch. There's a little bit rounded too. And then there are like ripples here on her clothes.
then she has this. Let me draw the ears actually first. She has these really big eyes, big black eyes. Actually, that's too high up on her head, I think. Uh, let me draw the bow first. She's got a bow, kind of squarish actually. And then Okay, then she's got a little dummy here. She's got a little nose. And she's got a big eyes. Okay, so now I'm going to try to draw the tentacles. A little cube. And then there's a little tentacle here. I'm smudging everything. Hold well on, guys. Let me. Oh, it's okay. I've got an idea. Okay, so then cubes like this. Okay. Okay, now the tentacle on this side. Thank you. 
then there's a bit, oh, there's a bit more to do there because there's an extra tentacle. There we go. And then we have the little bear. Baby rattle, thank you. Thank you, David, David from uh, David's art channel. That's what it's called, exactly, baby rattle, rattle, okay. Baby rattle. Okay. And then we have I don't know what you call bear's mouth. Is it a snout? I have no idea, but you have the little whatever it is, and then the nose, and then the eyes. Okay. Well, let me just... Her face kind of looks like a TV. <laughs> it's in the shape of a TV. Bigger. Okay. Okay, I'm going to try to rub all of this off. Where are my big rubbers? Bear with me. found one. Let me just adjust this down here. Okay. And then what I try to do is rub it off and hopefully I press hard enough that there'll be an imprint on the paper. And then I go over it with watercolor. Oh, sorry, that the table is shaking so much, guys. So 
Sorry about that. <laughs> Let me just throw all of that away. Looks like a mess. got some color on the paper by accident oh yes yeah, some of it spilled from here to here because I was like never mind so it looks a bit messy it's supposed to be a good rubber I don't know why it's doing this Maybe the graphite was just too. Dark. Oop. Well, that fell apart pretty quickly. Oh my gosh. Try again with this rubber. Okay. Okay, things are a bit messy, but I'm just going to go ahead and start painting. Couldn't quite, I think this rubber kind of messed it up a little bit. Um, Maybe I press too hard, but I'm going to paint on top. It is a sketch in a sketchbook, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, let's get going. I might need a thinner brush, maybe this one. I think there was another one in here as well. Um, oops, dropping plates. I have quite a few brushes. Ooh, I think I'm just going to put them here. Unfortunately, I got these crumbs on my paper. Okay, let's try the yellow first. I'm going to try mixing it here. I think there's a tinge of orange to the one on the doll. Okay. On the screen, it appears to look a little bit darker than it is in, in real life, which is interesting.
So they are fairly easy to use. Uh, they disperse quite well. Um, they um, they go on down on the paper very nicely. I think, you know, I, I feel like they mixed really well when I mixed the yellow with the orange to get this kind of more darker yellow. And they produce nice washes so far. Um, it's not muddy or chalky. I did have that experience earlier, but that's because I mixed two colors four times. And yeah, you don't want to, obviously you don't want to mix them a lot. But even here, you can see it's dried now. The one that got really chalky and it doesn't look so bad, actually. It looks quite nice. I, I managed to get a nice in, uh, gradient, as you can see. It goes from being quite saturated to a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. Though here, the, the, the magenta and the blue seem to have separated. I think I need to mix the yellow and the orange a bit more. So let me do that. You think that's that may be a little too orange, so I'm gonna try a little bit more yellow. Okay. The thing about watercolors as well is that if you add water to it, it will create lighter hues. So you can have one color, but by adding more water, it becomes lighter. So it's actually numerous colors. That makes sense. That's one thing I like about watercolors. Also, watercolors is a fairly easy medium to use. I think it's a great beginner's uh, medium. I'm not saying that it's not, that it can't be difficult because it can be tricky. Certainly when I first started using watercolors, I was a bit lost, but I mean, if you get these, you know, because it, it is also about the ratio of how much water you add. That's something I still struggle with these days. Like, I never know if I'm adding too much water or not. But you, you'll know once it's on the paper and you'll, you'll get used to it and you'll figure it out. Um, but, I mean, it's easy in the sense that it's immediate. You know, like, um, all, you have, all you need is water. Uh, you don't need anything else. Like oil, you there's a bunch of things you need before you can even start oil painting. Uh, it's not the same as watercolor. You just need a cup of water like the one I'm using. I've actually got two. I'm not doing this the way I'm supposed to be doing because you're supposed to dip it in one and then dip it in the other just to make sure you've cleaned out your brush, brush properly. But, yeah. Okay, well, that's the yellow. Um, yeah. I'll add the shadows later once it's dried. I'll try adding the blue now. This might be my brush. I'll probably use that other page for something else later. Maybe I'll paint something in gouache to cover that horrible, like, weird sketch. <laughs> okay. Tried to get rid of the yellow so I can work on the blue now because her clothes are blue. I, I realized that I've made her hair um, too big, but um, I can't change it now. Let me try and get that blue. Okay, so look at my color chart. Um, I would say it's probably this one, um, maybe with a little bit of that one. Oh, so okay, that one is the one next to the pink. I'm going to try. The thing about mixing colors is it's also a lot about experimentation. Okay, so now I'm going to try 
this one. Maybe this one. I think it was maybe the wrong one. Still too dark. Maybe if I add some white to it. Though in watercolors, you can use the white, but you're not supposed to use the white. You're supposed to use water to lighten the color, which is what I was saying earlier. Uh, still too dark. That's not the right. Though it, it's also hard to tell at this point how it's going to dry. The bottle is like the same color as her little robe and her bow. It's, I'm just going to use this blue. <laughs> I made it now. Mm. It's not so far off. It's a little bit lighter. Oh, sorry. Just brought up all my pictures, all the photos on my tablet. Maybe a little bit lighter. Maybe I'll add a little bit more white. I think white is good for when you're a beginner, beginner at watercolor like I am. <laughs> My birds want to get a word in. Okay, babies, I heard you. <laughs> um, because, uh, yeah, with watercolor, you're definitely not supposed to use white. I'm used to using white in everything. I'm supposed to use, uh, as I said, the water to lighten the color, but I haven't been always haven't always been successful at doing that. Is that okay? There's also some blue here on the rattle. Maybe I should have tested the color before using it. That was a bit silly of me. I think next time what I'm going to do is just test the color on this other piece of paper, just see what it looks like when it goes down on the paper, and then either use it or keep mixing it accordingly. I'm going to change the brush for those details. Um, for the corners. This one seems thin enough. I don't know, it still feels a bit too thick. Oh, that one is thin. That one is pretty nice. And the thing about the watercolors as well is that you can lift the color. So I don't need to add any more color if I'm trying to fill in the robe. I can just use the color that's already there and just lift it and bring it to the, the corners and the sides. There we go. And the thing about watercolor is because you can lift it, you can also bring it from one part of the picture to the other. Of course, it will grow lighter, especially with a cheap watercolor set, the more you lift it. Um, You can also run the danger of becoming a little watery. You can always um, 
add more color to it if you feel like there isn't enough. Okay, that's blue too. Of course it is. I forgot about these bits of the row. So yeah, they mix quite well. When I mixed the blue, I also encountered no problems, really nothing to speak of that stands out for me. Um, I thought the blue was fine. Um, I mixed two blues to get this blue and a little bit of white. And even though it does feel a bit shocky on the palette, um, when I add water to it, it kind of removes some of that chalkiness away. So it's not so bad, actually. I think what I'm going to do at the end, when I finish this picture, just go over with pencil to get some, some details in. I'll try to do it with the paintbrush, but I'm not sure if I'm talented enough to do that. <laughs> but I'll try. Um, right, okay. I'll add the shadows later on. I realize that I'm still doing that face. I did a live video a while ago where I drew a face. And um, I actually am going to go back to that face because I noticed some mistakes afterwards. It's that thing I was saying in the video of sometimes you need to leave your picture, leave, leave your picture. Um, and go back to it because you might not notice mistakes straight away. But then when you go back to it, you're like, oh, yeah, that doesn't look right. I need to fix that. And that's what happened with that picture that I drew of the face uh, live. Um, um, I noticed afterwards that there were some mistakes that I want to correct. Uh, I was going to correct them, but then I thought, no, I'll wait until I do the video again, and then I'll correct them on the video. Um, so I'm going to go back to that at some point. I'm going to revisit that. OK. Oh, oh no. See how messy I get? I, I messed up the bow a little. And I got some of the blue paint on the teddy bear and on the tentacle. So what I'm going to do, guys, is because I'm working with watercolors, this is one thing about watercolors is sometimes you're going to have to let them dry. These appear to be drying quite quick, to be fair. However, that may be to do with the paper. Paper makes a massive difference when it comes to any art medium. It doesn't matter if it's pencil, watercolors, wash, etc. Maybe not oil because oil is so thick. You can pretty much use oil on anything and you'll get pretty much the same effect every time, unless you're using like canvas, th there's always gonna be some texture that pops through, but then it depends on whether you dilute the oil or whether you use it really, really thick. So, you know, it, it depends on what your method is or if you're experimenting and trying different things. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry because it's wet and I'm making it messy now. And the bow also is a little bit bigger than it was supposed to be because, um, I messed around, I think the blue merged with the yellow because it was wet and the yellow was wet and that's how you make mistakes in watercolor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to come back to it later on today. I'll do another live video where I'll complete uh, the painting of my little sketch. As I said, I drew, um, I, did the, I drew the hair too big, but the thing about watercolor is if it lifts well, which watercolor is supposed to uh, to lift really well. I can always, uh, when I go over it with pencil, I can uh, 
choose where I want the lines to be. And then whatever is outside of that, I can try lifting it with a paintbrush and see if I can lift the yellow off and see if I can bring the hair down and make it a little bit more compact. Um, I'll try to fix the bow as well with pencil. Um, I do like working with lines because, you know, someone who is starting and I'm still learning, whatever, I like to know where everything goes. <laughs> Um, and this is a cartoon anyway. If you were drawing realistically, you shouldn't have lines, not sharp lines like this anyway. But yeah, I'm going to let it dry. I'll come back to it at the end of the day. I'll do another live video where I'll finish uh, painting in this sketch. And I'll see if, actually, let me see if I can lift some of the yellow right now. Let's see how well it lifts. Okay. I'm supposed to have a tissue actually to be able to, I don't have a tissue, so I'm just going to go like this. I know that's really silly. When I do another live video later on, I will definitely bring a tissue. But it seems to be lifting fine. Actually, I'll use my cloth. This is the good thing about watercolors. That's why it's so good for beginners, because if you make a mistake, you can lift it off and, um, you know, adjust it as you go along. Oh, there's a hair there, so I don't know where that hair's coming from. Probably my hair. Um, of course, with acrylic, you can always go over it and with oil the same, but oil can be tricky because oil takes a long time to dry, whereas acrylic dries straight away. So if you make a mistake, you can just go over it, and that's it. With watercolor, you can lift the color. So it's lifted quite well. Oh, on a first impression, um, I would say so far these watercolors are quite good. They mix really well, or at least that's been my experience so far. Literally tried them today for the first time. So this is my experience for, for the last like hour and a half. Um, I'll just get rid of some of these crumbs. See, it feels dry. Um, already but just in case I'm just gonna give it because I've lifted color there as well so I just have some water I'm just gonna give it a while and then I will come back to it it's almost dry I think it's because of the paper it absorbs the water quite quickly so yeah um so far they mix quite well it's my experience I managed to mix an orange and uh, a yellow and two blues and they were fine. I got a really good result. I think the colors are quite vibrant, quite pretty. Um, you can see that the particles have separated from the water in some cases, but that's just something that happens quite a bit, the cheap watercolors I find. Um, still, I think so far it seems like a good beginner set. You can layer on top as well. I layered here. I haven't layered here yet. Uh, that will be on the second part of the video. We'll find out how well it layers, but I would say it mixes well. Um, it dries quite quickly, at least on this type of paper, which is quite thick. It's, um, I should say here somewhere. It doesn't. <laughs> well done. Maybe it says at the back. Oh, yeah, here we go. So Fabriano Academia, or Acad Academia, uh, drawing paper, 200 gm squared, 48 sheets, acid free. Okay, so this is a, a one of my, my favorite sketchbook. I bought it in one of my favorite art stores in London, which are all closed now because of the lockdown. Um, this was ages ago, but yeah. Um, so far, I like I like uh, the way the paint dries on the paper. I think it still looks vibrant. It still retains a lot of its saturation. Um, yeah. Overall, I'll say this is a good beginner set. And even a, an expert could use it, I would say. Um, because, you know, if you're talented enough, you can really use anything. Some art supplies are just terrible. Even if you're really talented, it's just going to give you all sorts of challenges. But I think this is a really easy set to use. It's not that chalky. It's a little bit chalky, but I think it's something you can get around. Um, we'll see when I start layering and mixing more colors. But so far... I feel like this is a good set. So I'm going to stop it there because there will be a part two to this, which I will I will do it later on today when I finish painting in the picture. But so far, I would say this is a good beginner set. And 
I would recommend it uh, at the moment, uh, especially if you have children and they want to start with watercolors. This seems to be a good set. I also like the balance of colors. I like, I think any set should always at least have two of each of the primary colors so you can uh, create different hues. So you have two different yellows, you have two different reds. I mean, that vermilion is a little bit, I'm just going to add another layer to that vermilion because I feel like, let's see what happens. I think my birds think I'm talking to them. <laughs> I'm not usually this vocal, um, so I'm doing work silently. But yeah, like um, two reds, two yellows, many blues. Um, you have a few oranges. Uh, you have one magenta. Yeah, I often like mixing the magenta rather than the red, but as you can see, I mixed that red with that blue, and I got that nice purple. First time was a bit bluish, more bluish. This is definitely a bit more reddish. Um, but yeah, so far I have nothing really bad to say about this set. So again, I'll, I'll leave it for part two um, because, you know, um, I yeah, I'll let it dry and I'll come back and I'll have a better idea of what this is like. But so far, yeah, it seems to do everything that it's supposed to. Uh, what a color is supposed to do. It lifts nicely, it mixes nicely, it has vibrant uh, colors, pretty colors. Um, they are a little bit chalky, but that's standard with any cheap watercolor set. Um, they are a little bit uh, lighter maybe, but not as saturated as a more expensive watercolor set, but again, that's pretty standard. So yeah, I'm gonna leave it there. I'll come back to it later on. I'm hope I hope you like this video so far. And uh, if you really like it, please subscribe, leave a comment, and uh, oh, what was that other thing? Subscribe, leave a comment. There was something else. Like, oh, like the video, <laughs> please, uh, if you've liked it. And I will do part two um, later on. So please come back later on to my channel to watch part two, okay? Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys watching. You're awesome. And um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.